The Bethlehem argument is one of the most frequently cited by minimal historicists as the reason for their being historicists. It concerns why Gospel writers Matthew and Luke arranged for Jesus to have been born in Bethlehem and have been known to come from Nazareth. Their reasons for choosing Bethlehem is in the Tanakh or Old Testament. Bethlehem is a prominent place in the Old Testament with numerous mentions. In particular, the prophet Micah in chapter 5 writes, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will rule over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our lands and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders, who will rule the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod with drawn sword. He will deliver us from the Assyrians when they invade our lands and march across our borders. Both Matthew and Luke took this to be a prophecy about Jesus, but you can see from verses 3 to 6 that it was actually prophesying a successful military earthly ruler. Matthew quotes verse 2 in his story about the Magi. When the Magi tell Herod that they are looking for a newborn king, Herod consults the chief priests and teachers of the law to find out where the Messiah was to be born, and they come back with this verse. Herod then secretly contacts the Magi again to find out the date on which the star they had been following first appeared. So both Matthew and Luke need to get Mary to Bethlehem for Jesus' birth, but they use different schemes. In Matthew's scheme, Mary and Joseph live in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. On hearing what the Magi are looking for, Herod asks them to stop over in Jerusalem on their way back east and tell him where he can find the Messiah. In the event, the Magi were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and so took a different route home. Herod was angered by the Magi's duplicity and ordered all the boys aged two years and under in Bethlehem and the surrounding vicinity to be killed. An angel appeared in a dream to Joseph telling him to escape to Egypt to avoid this and to stay there until Herod died. On Herod's death, the angel was back in action, appearing in a dream to Joseph, telling him to return to Israel, which he duly did. On arrival, he found Herod's son, Herod Archelaus, was ruling Judea, and he considered this still to be a risk to Jesus, so he decided to go instead to Galilee and settled at Nazareth. In Luke's scheme, Mary and Joseph live in Nazareth. Caesar Augustus has a census taken of the entire Roman world while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own town to register. In Luke 2, verse 4, So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. The family then returned to Nazareth via Jerusalem, where Jesus was presented at the temple. So it's pretty clear why Matthew and Luke wanted to have Jesus born in Bethlehem. What is not so clear is why he had to be from Nazareth. If it was just a made-up story, then surely the simplest thing would be to have him coming from Bethlehem. Instead, we have all these convolutions of Matthew's fleeing Bethlehem to escape death at the hands of Herod and finally ending up in Nazareth, and Luke's bizarre empire-wide census decree, which of course never happened. In fact, Matthew does give a scriptural reason. In Matthew 2.23 he writes, And he went and lived in the town called Nazareth, so was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. But there is no such prophecy in the Tanakh, nor anywhere else we have been able to find. Matthew and Luke must have felt constrained by contemporary ideas about where Jesus was from that they did not feel able to contradict. The historicist position is that the constraint was that Jesus was a real person who had come from Nazareth, and this was widely known. Hence the fictional birth-time odysseys of Jesus' family were necessary. The mythicist position is, however, also reasonable. Mark has Jesus coming from Nazareth. Matthew and Luke were written later, by which time the tradition had already taken root to the extent that they did not feel able to contradict it. Personally, I don't think this argument particularly favours historicity, so why is it so widely cited to justify historicist positions? One reason may be that it is accessible. It only relies on widely known Bible stories and not on any esoteric knowledge of historical sources or obscure scriptural passages. Also, it's a relatively simple argument that is easy to understand. Another reason may be that minimalist historicists are quite keen not to be branded as triumphal historicists or Christian apologists. 
A feature of the Bethlehem argument that may be attractive to some historicists is that it is clearly a minimal historicist position, not triumphalist, as it presupposes denial of the truth of the infancy narratives.